this, this show today is, yes, it is about subwoofers, and I know they're not for everyone, but here's the thing. Uh, you know, there are lots of subwoofers that are designed for home theater, for home theater shenanigans, you know, explosions and special effects. Yeah, yeah, there, there's that kind. But then there's also subwoofers that are for music. Some of them, it really much exclusively for music. They don't do the boom, boom stuff as well. But they play music. They play bass instruments. They play the room. They just do more of what your main speakers aren't supplying. And that's why adding a subwoofer, even if you have pretty big speakers, might actually make sense. I'm not saying for everyone. I'm just saying it's worthy of your consideration. And that brings us to today's subject, the RHEL Classic 98. Now, you look around the subwoofer market, as I did before I started working on this review, and I see lots of shiny black, you know, high-gloss black, high-gloss white boxes with big, boastful woofers on their front baffles. That's not what's going on here. This one, as you can plainly see, is more like a you know piece of furniture. <laughs> you know, it has this beautiful, genuine walnut veneer. And the build quality of the cabinet, yeah, it is furniture grade. Nice stuff. And then as for the woofer itself, it's a 10-inch down-firing woofer. It's actually a 10-inch pulp cone woofer with a steel frame. And the motivating force for the woofer is a 300-watt Class D amplifier. So, yeah, but I just want to stress that RHEL, you know, does make home theater subwoofers, but they started out basically as a two-channel, you know, for music subwoofer company in the 90s. And this model, the Classic 98, is kind of like a reference to where, they, where it all began for them. And I think that is a beautiful way to start this review. Hey, let's take a look at the back panel. It's pretty sparsely populated. You'll see, of course, uh, two RCA... Uh, inputs, okay, that makes sense. And then to their left is a strange looking connector that's made by a company called Neutrik, or it's called Speak on, I get confused. But anyway, it's been part of RHEL subwoofers for a long, long time. And you use that to hook up the Classic 98 to your power amp that's also driving your speakers. I know that that sounds a little confusing. It's not that big a deal. I'll put up a picture to show you what that looks like. But anyway, you can use this sub either way from the speaker level input that the Neutrik is called the speaker level input or high level input or the RCAs. Your choice. And above them are three knobs. One is a volume control for the speaker level input. The next one is a volume control for the uh, low level inputs. And the next one is a crossover control, or actually a low pass control that goes from 30 hertz to 120 hertz. There's also a phase switch, just a toggle switch that goes between 0 and 180 degrees. I'm sure some of you would rather just go wireless and not use any of those uh, connection schemes. And of course, RHEL is there to help you with that. They actually have two different modules to do a wireless hookup to your system. So they got that covered. So I, you know, I'm going to put up the complete specifications and note that RHEL subs are covered by a three-year warranty. RHEL sells direct in the United States. I'll put the link on the description below this video and also say that the shipping is free in the United States. They are sold with a 60-day return policy in the United States, but RHEL is also distributed in Europe and also Asia. The U.S. price is $1,399, and that price includes shipping. And now, a few nitpicks. <laughs> a... Uh, the RHEL 98 does not come with remote control or auto setup, and these things are important to some people, but I don't think setup is that big a deal. And the phase switch, the 0 to 180, is, is okay. You can use that, but having a continuous phase control that goes from 0 to 180 continuously is preferred by some uses. I, again, I don't think that that's a big deal. I'm just pointing that out. Now, as for setup, I've been doing this a long time, and I know from long experience where to place subwoofers in my room for the best, well, smoothest, flattest response in my room. 
But if you're new to subwoofers and you've never had one before and you've heard that <laughs> the big lie that subwoofers are omnidirectional, does it matter where you put them? Well, that's just flat out wrong. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. You have to. Just like with speakers, you have to experiment where to put them. Um, now, if you don't want to experiment, that's cool. You just put the sub as close to the speaker as possible and cross your fingers and hope that that's the best. That's, that's not the worst place to start, but you could do a lot better. And I use this method that was shown to me by Dr. Sue from Sue Research long ago. And it's actually a very cool idea. He says, put the subwoofer in the listening position. In other words, move your couch or chair out of the way. Put the sub in the listening position. Play music with a repetitive bass. And then you walk around the room and listen to the bass response. And you will be amazed, I guarantee it, that in some parts of the room, it's loud and boomy and thick and muddy. And in other parts of the room, the bass almost disappears. It's <laughs> just like, where, is it on kind of thing? Yeah, right. So anyway, your, your job is to walk around the room and find the places where the bass line seems smoother. They're not, some notes are not louder than others, that, that sort of thing. You get, as you do it, you'll start to understand what I'm talking about here. And then, then when you find those places, uh, that's where the sub would sound best. So in other words, then you exchange places. Now you take the sub out of the listening position, put it in the spots that you thought sounded the smoothest and flattest, and you're good to go. That, that is the method. I know it sounds kind of weird and stuff, but believe me, it definitely works and it's worth a try. At this point, I'm going to let you know that, no, I did not have other subwoofers to compare with the Classic 98. But what I did do is I used the Classic 98 with a bunch of different speakers because every speaker you use with it, it's going to be a whole new ball game. And the first one I used, which I referred to in the Rotel review recently that I just did, the A11 Mark II review, yeah, I use it with these big Zoo speakers, the Zoo Dirty Weekend 6 that have a 10-inch driver. And they make plenty of bass on their own. They're you know, relatively large floor-standing speakers. But adding this one, the Classic 98, it just dramatically changed the sound for the better in terms of it sounding like, well, a bigger, more authoritative sounding speaker. And I wasn't even playing music that was particularly bass heavy. I was playing this incredible Taj Mahal record. It's on Water Lily Acoustics. That's the name of the record company. It was done live in a church, I think in the 90s. And wow, I'm playing that music and just sneaking in, so to speak, the rel underneath the bass of the uh, Dirty Weekend 6, which is probably around 50 hertz or so, right? And I'm just marveling how it's not just about adding bass. You get a sense of dimension and space that when you turn the subwoofer off, it all just goes away. It's pretty amazing. You think like, is the subwoofer really doing anything? Again, because this particular recording doesn't have a lot of deep bass. Oh yes, it definitely is doing something. I want to mention one other uh, piece of music that I played uh, with the uh, Zoo and the Rel, and that was this Rob Wasserman duets. CD. Now, Rob Wasserman was a bass player. He's passed away, but it's filled with great music with different, different duets. But the two standouts are Lou Reed and Jennifer Warrens. I mean, again, the way, of course, the bass was helped, the bass instrument was helped by the, by the sub, but it was also their voices, especially Lou Reed's voice. It just sounded more like he was really in the room, more, more body attached to that voice with the classic 98 helping out. Well, on the bottom end. So, of course, I was itching to hook up the Magnapan LRS Plus Planar Magnetic Panel Speakers because they are definitely bass challenged on their own. They're crying out for subwoofers. I, I don't know what percentage of people that buy LRS use subs, but it's a lot. Not all people do, but many do, right? So that's kind of where this comes in. And anyway, so I hook it up, and, and the amplifier I was using was the Atoll... Uh, IN50 signature, 50 watt class AV amplifier. I just referred to it recently in the Rotel review. And then this, the DAC that I was using was the Emotiva XDA3. That combination without the sub was, was really nice. Very 3D, very clear, very pure sounding. Did all the things that I want from the LRS <laughs> except the bass, right?
Oh, and for these tests with the Atoll and the LRS Plus, I was using the Atoll speaker level outputs. The ones driving the speakers were also driving the woofer. So just to clarify that. And the matchup was very good. Really, actually surprisingly easy to do. And this speaker definitely needs all the help it can get on the bottom end. Now, it doesn't make it. <laughs> Hitting us up. It's not going to make the LRS plus a rock and roll monster. You're going to be playing EDM or reggae. It's, it's not really going to do that like a larger, more dynamic speaker could. It's not going to do that. But it does make the LRS plus sound bigger. And you hear more of that bottom end information, not just bass, but room sound, spatial 3D sort of things happening. Definitely more with the classic 98 on the bottom of the LRS. Yeah, it was, it was definitely checking all the boxes that needed to be checked for me within those expectations, those realistic expectations of what adding a subwoofer to this speaker can do. I, oh, I forgot to mention the, the music I was playing for this part, and it was Eno's Apollo, which is, the Apollo is the name of the album, and it was one of his ambient records from, I don't know, 2000s or so, a ways back, but a gorgeous recording, gorgeous music, but it does have a lot of low frequency detail and information that's down there that is completely missing when I listen to the LRS on its own. So adding this up was definitely a happening concept. So before I left the REL uh, Magnapan combination, I did play some reggae, specifically these. I have a whole bunch of these uh, Studio One collections. They are fantastic if you're into this sort of music. Studio One was the label for reggae, at least in my opinion. Anyway, I'm playing that music, and it's not dynamic, so it's not really challenging the LRS's limitations. But that, of course, that added low end oomph and drive to the music was happening, because it is so bass heavy in its, in its music. Not, not all the tracks, not all the bands, but a lot of it was, and it put a big smile on my face. So, again, check. For my next pairing, I had to do this one, of course, the Kef LS50 Meta with the Classic 98. And the thing is, I had spent a lot of time listening to these speakers without a subwoofer, and I'm perfectly happy with it. It's just a five and a quarter inch Uni-Q driver. It makes enough bass to keep me happy. So, saying all that, what would the RHEL bring to the party? Well, again, it just brings that bottom end in. And I was playing the caps where I don't usually play them over at the other end of the room where there's more space to fill. And yet the rel definitely added the low end clarity and drive and punch that the LS50s on their own couldn't actually muster at all. And it's the funny thing. When you, when you turn off the sub, this is how I'm doing it, right? I dial it in, I get it balanced, I listen to some music, I get that in, okay, I got that, and then I walk over and I just turn off the subwoofer, go back to my, my chair, and say, uh-oh, <laughs> it's all over now. It just sounds so, so pale and small, and, you know, it's just so much less satisfying without the sub. So that's, that's kind of a clue for you guys. It's the kind of thing that once you get used to it, living without it might be hard. It's, it's well, I'll, I'll talk about that more in the So Steve, what do you really think section of this review? The last speaker I played was my main reference speaker, the Pure Audio Project Duet 15. Now these speakers have 15 inch woofers. So you'd say, well Steve, if they have 15 inch woofers, a pair of them obviously, uh, why would you need a 10 inch subwoofer? And the thing is, well the speakers are placed for where they sound good not for maximum bass response. Those are two different things. You have to have them much closer to the wall to get more bass out of these speakers. And even with that, the Pure Audio Project speakers aren't tuned for maximum bass extension. They're tuned for maximum bass clarity. So they're forfeiting a lot of bass, let's say under you know, 45 hertz isn't really their strong suit. So anyway, so that's what was going on. So then I put this up where it's going to make the maximum amount of bass, because I know the spot, and I play all sorts of music. Oh, I play this percussion symphony CD. Oh, this is great stuff. I mean, it's an, it's an orchestra of percussion instruments, big ones and small ones, and details and clarity. And I'm going back and forth with sub, without sub. And again, absolutely, the Classic 98 
just made it more real. There was more room. It's done in a concert hall. There was more room to the sound, acoustic room. You know, I'm talking about the, the venue of the recording session. I'm hearing more of that with the sub than without the sub. And of course, all the, the large, you know, big bass drums and stuff definitely had more oomph and power and impact in their delivery with the classic 98 bringing out the bottom end uh, gusto. So now it's time for, so Steve, what do you really think of the REL Classic 98? You know what I think? I think for $1,399, the Classic 98 will be, for the right person, the right system, the best upgrade you can buy for that kind of money. When I say best, I mean the most noticeable upgrade that you could buy for that kind of money in terms of the dollars spent and what you're feeling from the sound of music in your room. Absolutely. I mean, but understand where I'm coming from. When I set up a subwoofer, I'm not trying to be impressed with how much bass it's producing. What I want the subwoofer to do is blend with the speakers that I'm using. And these different speakers I used over the course of this review, that was the whole point of doing it this way. So yes, some people buy subwoofers and they want to feel that impact all the time. And if that's your, if that's your game, man, Go for it. Absolutely. Me, I want to think sometimes, is it on? <laughs> I don't hear anything. But then something comes along in the music and I go, oh yeah, it's, it's there. It's definitely there. But I don't want to hear it all the time. That is a personal choice. I blend, I tune for subtlety in the bottom end. That's what I'm looking for. It's not about the best subwoofer. It's about the one that works for what you want out of the subwoofer. Yeah. So for, yeah, for $1,399, you're not going to get an amplifier that does it like this does in terms of, the, of a change or a speaker or anything like that, or preamp, or cartridge, or turntable, or DAC. This is going to deliver more of a sonic upgrade than any other component you could buy for $1,399. And that's a great trick. <laughs> so yeah, and the other thing that's good about subwoofers is that, you know, you can turn it off when you want to not disturb your family, you know, listening late at night. You can eliminate the bottom end with a flip of a switch. On the other hand, if you want to really crank it up to feel more from the music when you're in the mood, yeah, you just go ahead and do that. So there's a lot of versatility, and you can also use it kind of like a loudness control for when you're listening at really quiet levels. You just sneak up the bottom end a little bit, and it gives you some of that fullness that you might be lacking when you're playing very quiet. That's, again, this is true for all subwoofers, but in terms of my uh, enjoyment of doing this review and playing with the RHEL 98, Classic 98, yeah, I was having a good time. And I really appreciated how well and how easy it was to make it blend with the KEF LS50 and the MagnaPan and the Pure Audio Project and the Zoo speakers. Yeah. Yeah. It does that. And again, that's really important to me that it's not just, oh, it's a really good subwoofer doesn't mean anything. It, it, the question always is, how does it blend with different kinds of speakers? And this one, thumbs up. Two thumbs up. And now, speaking of two thumbs up, absolutely, we're going to do it. The Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. This comes from Barney. He lives in Motherwell. That's in tropical Scotland. Really? Hmm, I'm surprised. I didn't know there was a tropical Scotland. But anyway, that's where he is. His turntable is a Riga P10 fitted with a Riga Amphetta 3 cartridge. And the preamplifier is a Name Olive Series NAC 72. Power amp is a NAP 180, all service and recapped by name. The streamer DAC is Moon by Sim Audio 280D. Phono stage is a Riga Aria Mark 3. Cassette deck. Yeah, a Nakamichi CR7E. So the speakers are Mission 753, and all the cabling in the system, as far as I can tell, is by Cord Epic X cables. Uh, the headphones are Grado SR325s, and then there's an Astell and Kern SR25DAP. Thank you, Barney. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg. You know, you know who I am. I am the audiophiliac. If you like 
what I'm doing here on the channel with reviews and viewer systems of the day <laughs> and chats with Herb and other people and my thought pieces and all that stuff and so much more, please consider contributing to my Patreon. Uh, you, it, and Patreon accepts payment, by the way, in dollars, pounds, euros, and most other currencies at this point. You are billed on the first of the month, so if you subscribe today, you don't get billed until the first of the month. And in the top two tiers, you and I will have a conversation every month for 15 minutes or so. And that's always fun. And what else? Hey, if you just like the video, really, please, give me a thumbs up. No, you can't give me two. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like when, when you think I deserve it. And if you have yet to subscribe, please do. And with that, I can say, yes, my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.